Uh, Maria Paz, can you tell us about how climate change is affecting Peru now? Yes, um, well, climate change is affecting Peru in many ways. Uh, the most visible one is the glacier retreat that we have had 25% uh, of glacier retreat in the, the last 30 years and, and most of them are going to be disappeared in the, the next 15 years. And that is affecting our water supply and, and, the, and it also affects energy production because we generate energy a lot from hydroelectric that, that come from glaciers. So that's the most visible impact, but we also have had increased uh, weather events, um, floods, mainly floods. Um, we are a, a country that are, is very affected by El Niño, and whenever El Niño comes into a country, it's a f five to eight percent of loss of GDP. So if it, our scenarios say that this could be f more frequent, and that could really have a, have an impact in, in our economy. What is happening in Peru to tackle climate change? Well, they are happening a lot of things since the COP uh, is going to be there in December. So um, there are different groups that are working on climate change. Uh, one of the, the groups is, is, is based in, in a project program called Plan CC, with us the planning um, uh, in Peru, uh, looking at climate change uh, mitigation, reduction of emissions. Uh, this process will, um, man will be in charge of, of producing the national contribution for Peru that we have to put forward for the international negotiations. And that's, that's a very important uh, process in our country because it has to have uh, legitimacy and, and, and high level approval. So um, there are all the things, of course, that are happening on the ground. There are a lot of uh, rural development um, projects uh, with an adaptation focus and they are very nice uh, experiences that could can be scaled up and, and one of them is the, the program of adaptation to climate change that is in Los Andes of Peru and, and it's, it's really exciting because it's, um, it's trying to tackle uh, the resilient part of, of the a poverty reduction program. So. I think they're going to be really nice results to, to share with, with international communities. When you talk about uh, coming up with a national contribution to the uh, Conference of the Parties for the UNFCCC, um, what kind of a negotiation among uh, parties within Peru itself is needed to come up with that agreement? Actually, it's a, it's a new thing for Peru, so, so the process is just being develop, developed. But the stakeholders that have to be the, 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 the ha, that have to be there are private sector uh, because they're, if we are going to have an ambitious uh, target or objective, they, they have to be part of the, the solution and the proposals. Also part of the civil society uh, because some of the, the, the measures will affect their economy or would be good for them. And of course, the minister, the ministries of well, the Ministry of Economy and Finance. Uh, it's a crucial one because they look at the competitiveness of the country and, and, and inclusion issues. And if this is not seen as a as something that will be good in terms of competitiveness and poverty reduction and inequity, why would we do that? So it's a process that it's a very serious process that we 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 are running and. and that needs to engage a lot of very important stakeholders. What kind of low carbon development options are under active discussion in Peru right now? Well, there are many because we have a group uh, under Plan CC, this program that looks at, about, uh, on how to plan climate change in, in Peru. And some of them uh, are around energy, uh, energy efficiency, renewables, um, distributed energy, local production, but in, in a massive way of energy. Um, you have also, well, m most of our emissions come from deforestation. There are the lots of, of measures that are dealing with uh, uh, sustainable management of forests and improving uh, 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 forest conservation. It has, it has to deal with a lot of social and environmental problems that are really critical to, to tackle and they're not so easy. 
So the investment is not that large, but the transaction costs are very, very difficult because you have to actually involve a lot of stakeholders from farmers to indigenous people to great investors. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge thing, actually. What gets you most excited about climate compatible development? What initiative have you seen in Peru and thought, wow, that's the future? I think with with this this concept of climate compatible development, what 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 we have is a chance to do things differently, and right, and and that is happening with a new problem that the the, 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 the government will 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 develop this year. That is trying to look at models where you solve a development problem, but with a climate lens, and you add the financial structure for that, trying to incorporate the private sector. So it's like you are innovating in PPPs, in private, uh, public-private partnership, to solve a social and environmental problem. And it gives you a lot of room to, to, for innovation and to do things right. Can you give us a particular example of climate compatible development in action on the ground? Well, it's in, in process, but there's one program that is called Haku Winyang in Peru, in, in very, very high Andes, where a lot of rural uh, poor people live. And this program is, is basically trying to increase the capacity of poor people to be uh, self-sustainable. And, and with them, with the program, we are working in Peru to uh, try to make this, all these measures resilient uh, and, and also try to uh, look for a, for a way not only to have um, resources, financial resources from the government, but after the government goes, goes out from, from the, that, that local, the, the, that place, then, for example, microfinance can play a role. So what, I'll, uh, what are the enabling conditions for these communities to actually access this new finance? What is that that the corporation and the national government should do? Uh, what are the impacts in, in development, not only in terms of climate change adaptation? So that's, that's one, one example. Where do you see CDKN making a difference in Peru? Well, ma ma CDKN is, is involved in the largest project for, for climate change planning, climate change development planning in Peru, which is Plan CC. And it's a unique way of, of developing policy because you're not only developing uh, uh, evidence-based uh, proposals, but you are having a process in which you involve stakeholders that never, never thought about climate change. So if there are a lot of histories of, of change in people where they, the first time they, we ask them to come to the, to the project and be part of the process, they tell, why, why, are, you, why are you asking for my... For me, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I think you are mistaken. Please call some, someone else. And now they are really an active part of, of the proposal. And that's, that's amazing because you have a lot of private sector people from the ministries that never, never even thought about climate change. And they are active. They are having an active role now. So I think CDKN is helping with this project, but also with all the network that, that CDKN has around the world. A lot of people in Peru can learn a lot and, 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 and go faster in, in, in not only developing new ideas, but actually going into implementation. So that's, I think, that's a great help. Overall, are you optimistic or pessimistic that climate change action and poverty reduction can be accomplished at the same time? Can these go forward in tandem successfully? Totally. I'm pretty optimistic. That's the way to go. There's no other way to develop. You have to, you, you have to integrate both things, and it's a winning, win-win, win-win proposal. Otherwise, you, you, your your effort in, in poverty reductions wouldn't wouldn't be sustainable. I just have a figure for you: uh, thirty percent in, in Peru. There was a study about poverty, and they when they did the analysis, they, they found out that thirty percent of of those poor people that were not poor anymore. Uh, return to, to being poor again, 30% of the 100. And out of this 30%, uh, the cause was due to uh, climate-related disasters. So what, this, what does this mean? That if you don't tackle the climate impacts, then you won't be able to be really effective in your poverty reduction uh, 
uh, measures. So it, they, they, have to, they have to go together.